Hello and welcome to another Giant Slayer TFT Top 5 Countdown video. Today we'll be taking a look at the current Top 5 compositions for Patch 12.7. In a lot of ways, our Top 5 list for 12.7 will look similar to the first week at 12.6 before the V patch. The reason for this is that a lot of builds are still near the top, but the difference is flexibility. So much in the current meta revolves around flex play. This definitely may change over the course of the patch, but for now, flex play is the way to go. With all that said, let's go ahead and get started. But before we begin, please don't forget to click the links in our description. Give your support to everyone who helped make this video happen. We host many TFT shows and tournaments with plenty of exciting content to come. Be sure to also follow our Giant Slayer TFT social media pages. All right, let's get back to the video. Kicking off our list, we have Mutant coming in at number five. Mutant is an interesting synergy because it has the potential to be the strongest board in the meta, but it can also be fairly meh. The variance is tied directly to what the mutation ends up being in each lobby. Synaptic Web, Cybernetic Enhancement, and Voracious Appetite are, on average, going to place better than the other mutations. That means some games Mutant won't be utilized at all, and other times the less viable mutation will be played and the result will be a lower than average placement. Point is, playing Mutant comes with a lot of variables. Each mutation tends to play out differently and a lot of the time is reliant on having either an emblem or an augment. This is because Mutant is easily one of the best synergies to have an emblem for as it opens up the door to so many possibilities. Ari with Synaptic Web, Backline Carries with Cybernetic or Adrenaline, AP boards using Bio Leech. The possibilities aren't endless like free breadsticks, but we guarantee you will be full with how many variations there are. But let's focus on the best of the best for Mutant. The two best mutations are Synaptic Web and Cybernetic Enhancement with Voracious Appetite closely behind them. Synaptic Web did take a hit with Malzahar nerfs, but as we said, having an emblem makes a world of difference. With five mutants active on an Ari or Victor, this composition goes crazy hard and can easily win games. Malzahar may be a bit worse with the Synaptic Web after all the nerfs, but he's still a great supporting champion. The overall build comes down to 5 Mutant plus Arcanists since the main carry is usually Ari or Victor. Cybernetic is less reliant on using a non-mutant carry and instead focuses on Kha'Zix. Cybernetic provides bonus health and, importantly, bonus AD, which can go as high as 7D with 7 Mutants. In general, this board is more centered around all of the mutants, so you want to have at least 5, Kha'Zix as the carry, and an extra Assassin tossed in. Beyond that, Bruisers for more frontline is never bad, or if you have an emblem, you can play champions like Aurelia or Jace as they benefit a lot from the bonus AD. As we said, flexible play is the king of the convergence currently, and Mutant is definitely a flexible composition. Just be aware of its limitations and play around each mutation properly, and you'll be climbing ranked in no time. Let's continue on to the number four composition, Arcanist. Arcanist didn't receive much in the patch as the small Ari buff is balanced out by the tiny nerf to Victor. In general, what makes this composition strong in the meta is how consistent it is in the mid game when you have a Vex 2 frontline and 4 to 6 Arcanist backing up your carry. Elzahar isn't exactly a carry anymore, but he does well as an item holder until Ari or Victor is playable. Plus, there's a few other options like Corky or Lucian to hold on to items, as well as an early VIP brand being one of the best. The bottom line is Arcanist boards have a lot of mid game options. This is important because it saves the Arcanist player health to then go find Ari 2 or go to level 8 and play Victor. An Arcanist Emblem is also quite useful to have as it adds to the flexibility of the board, which is somewhat rigid normally. Augments can also play a key role in boosting the viability of an Arcanist board such as Luden's Echo, Battle Mage, or Runic Shield. The basic composition to strive for will be Ari, Vex, Malzahar, Swain, Brand, and Ziggs with Braum, Morgana, or Syndra rounding out the level 8 board to provide 3 Syndicate. The Syndicate units can be replaced with other things like Enchanter, more Frontline, or even Silco. In any case, the core composition is easy enough to put together, has a strong mid-game, and can scale well in the late game with units like Victor and Silco. By no means is this composition the strongest, but the consistency is always key for climbing ranked, and Arcanist is certainly consistent. Up next, we have Renata Bruiser coming in at number 3. We've talked a lot about the value of flexibility, and while Renata compositions don't stray too far from their base synergies, there's still a lot of viable variations to play. At the core of the build, there's Renata, Zack, Vi, and an additional Chemtech unit, which can really be any of them, though Trindamir and Victor are usually the ones being played. With just four champions, you can play a lot of variations of the comp. Of course, there are standard boards to play with six Bruiser or five Chemtech and four Bruiser being the two most common. Since you really only need four champions baseline to play off of, there's plenty of options to choose from. Seven Chemtech, Warwick Reroll, Trindamir Reroll, Four Scholar, Mutant Chemtech, and more. 
Are all of these variations strong? No, but the key here is that they are all playable, and that gives players agency in their games to make decisions. The more decisions available to the player, the more likely they can turn a game around or end up with a unique endgame board that is tailored specifically to win that particular lobby. Okay, we went a bit off the rails there, but again, we're just highlighting that flexibility is important. In truth, the best part about Renata Bruiser is the scaling. Bruisers provide an effective early game, Chemtech Renata stabilizes the mid game, and then the late game is taken care of by Victor and Silco. It's simple, elegant, and easy to play. Once you have the basics down, then you can go crazy on variations, but if you want a simple to play scaling board, Renata Bruiser is the way to go. Even though we've constantly mentioned flex play, the number two composition is by far the most rigid on our list, Striker. Try as they might to nerf her, Sivir keeps coming back to the forefront of every meta. Aurelia is, unfortunately, much weaker than she used to be, but she does exceedingly well as a secondary damage dealer. With just Sivir and Aurelia, your board is well on its way to a top four. As we said, a striker board is as far away from being a flex comp as you can be, since you always need to play at minimum four strikers with Sivir carry and Aurelia as a secondary DPS. There's no wiggle room here outside of extreme outliers like Nar carry. The rest of the composition can be a wider range of champions, though ideally you want to play Striker when 6 Striker is possible, either with an Emblem or Augment. If not 6 Striker, then the most common variation is simply 4 Striker and 4 Scrap. Aurelia is the unit that ties those two synergies together, and Scrap adds extra late game scaling with Jinx. The strength of this board is the shields from Scrap buy enough time for Aurelia to begin resetting and Sivir to ramp up in the backline. It can also be played with a few extra 5 costs in the late game if necessary, or just more frontline to buy time. There's also the Hextech variant, but let's be honest, it's nowhere near as strong anymore as Striker. That said, it is still playable, just don't expect it to consistently place well. You can also list a few other potential ways to build a Striker board, but again, this is not a flex composition. It's meant to be played a few specific ways, and that's what we recommend you do if you're trying to play it. Just keep in mind that you don't have to commit to a striker board until stage 4 or 5, meaning you can always pivot if it doesn't look like the board is coming together. With that, we can move on to the final composition coming in number 1, Innovator Flex. Honestly, we considered just calling this Flex, but looking at the meta, Innovator is often the core to a lot of Flex late game boards. This also encompasses other synergies like Socialite and Scrap as they also contribute to the flexible style of play, but also are usually tied in with Innovators. The value of Innovator comes from a few key champions. Seraphine provides a lot of utility, OK magic damage, as well as the Socialite Hex. Echo is one of the best low-cost utility units and has his hand in a lot of different cookie jars in the meta. The third Innovator can be flexible, but is usually Ezreal early on in the game and Jace later on. Jace is a powerhouse 5 cost as both a frontliner and a backline DPS. Having just those three champions is enough to play around in a plethora of ways. One such way is the classic Jin Sniper playstyle on top of an Innovator bed. Jin isn't an amazing damage dealer on his own, but with good items and a backup DPS, he's doing quite well in the meta. The benefit of playing Jin is also being able to play Orianna, which then adds more CC and utility to the board. If not Jin, then there's a late game option of Zeri. This is a bit more complicated of a board to play, but a Zeri 2 with or without VIP is crazy strong or is a secondary damage dealer. Other than the sniper variation, there is still the classic 7 innovator board. It's a bit harder to hit these days, but still capable of easily top 4ing thanks to how good the dragon is. This variation is definitely less consistent, but when the opportunity presents itself to play 7 innovator, we recommend taking it. Then there's boards playing off of all other kinds of carries like Jinx, Orianna, or Draven. There's more than that, but honestly we'd just be naming every potential carry in the meta at that point. Basically, when it comes down to using innovators, you can really play what you want based on what resources are available to you in that specific game. Tailor your board to what works best with your items and augments, and we guarantee you'll be playing in the top four consistently. All right, folks, that's it for our top five compositions for patch 12.7. But before we go, we have a few honorable mentions to talk about. First, we need to address Warwick Reroll. Warwick Reroll has managed to stay at least somewhat relevant as it's capable of top fouring. The problem is, as always is the case with our honorable mentions, consistency. This board can struggle to do well if you're not high rolling all of the necessary upgrades fast enough, and it does have scaling issues. We recommend playing this if the stars align, meaning you have a lot of the components to make Warwick items and are naturally hitting the necessary champions pre-level 6. In a similar vein, Talon reroll is still out there in the meta, but it's even less consistent than the Warwick reroll. 
The problem with Talon is, like Warwick, when you don't hit early enough, it suffers massively. On the plus side, it's a board that can win streak early if you have items for Talon and VIP active. On the downside, it won't scale well and is incredibly weak to good positioning. We don't recommend ever forcing this composition, but again, if you have a lot of the pieces for it pre-level 6, then it becomes a viable option. Finally, Twin Shot. We like Twin Shot, we really do. We have to admit it has a problem, and that problem is its reliance on augments. Whether it's Twin Shot Heart, Soul, or Sharpshooter to effectively play this board and scale well in the late game, you need really good augments. That said, it does well with Lucian as the mid-game carry, and Gangplank Mercenary is an excellent opening board. Jinx also adds much needed late game scaling, but the problem is still having the right augments to do well. So like our other two honorable mentions, we don't recommend forcing this composition unless you have the right tools to do so. That's all for today's video, folks. We're fans of flexible play, and thankfully the meta has leaned heavily in that direction. The downside is for any fans of low cost boards, there's not many options to choose from. In any case, we can't deny this is one of the better metas we've had in the mid set, at least for now. Let us know in the comment section below what your current favorite composition is. Thank you for watching. If you're enjoying our content, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe. Future Giant Slayer, TFT Videos.